Hello and welcome to the first session of Deleuze on Control and Resistance by Anna Longo. In proscriptal control societies, Deleuze announces the rise of a new social organization rooted in a mutation of capitalism. While the previous phase was characterized by the subjection of humans to motorized machines, the new one is marked by the appearance of a third type of machine, cybernetics and informational technologies. Rather than imposing social roles and fixed identities, the systems, the system's further deterioration requires a continual variation of subjectivities operating through a smooth modulation of fluxes. Individuals are no more cast by discipline in closed space of surveillance, but within an open network, they are constantly called upon to adapt to contingencies. Everywhere, surfing has already replaced the older sports. Thus, what differentiates the required fluidity of the present away from the revolutionary becoming that Deleuze usually invokes as a form of creative resistance against the normativity of power, what is an act of resistance against a system that appears to evolve unpredictably by dragging identities into its accelerating deterioratizations? To answer these questions, the seminar proposes going through Deleuze's final, final political writings and interviews to clarify the mutant logic that he attributes to capitalism and the role of information and technology in the continuous modulation of identities. Moreover, we will put into question his concept of creation as an act of resistance to understand the sense of the revolutionary role that it assumes for the artist and the philosopher. The seminar do art and philosophy still have the capacity of surpassing the impressive acceleration of technological and algorithmic creativity. Anna Longo obtained her PhD in aesthetics philosophy at University Paris 1. She's a member of the Collège International de Philosophie. She has taught at the University Pantheon Sorbonne and Call Arts and is, a, is an instructor at the New Center for Research and Practice. Her research crossed several fields, such as metaphysics, epistemology, and aesthetics. She has been the author and editor of several books, such as Le Paradoxe de la Finitude, La Genèse du Transcendental. Breaking the Spell, Spe Speculative Realism Under Discussion, Time Without Becoming, and Divinity de la Conoscenza, Estetica e Contingenza de Real. Anna, the floor is yours. Thank you, Rafael. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so, um, this is our, our first, uh, first meeting, so I will um, explain you a little bit how it works or about the uh, presentations, final essay and, and everything. So how we will organize this, this class. But first of all, I would like you to introduce yourself um, and also, um, also let me know uh, how much you know about Deleuze. Um, so I will, I will, I will try to to, to set the the classic explanation of concepts according to uh, to your understanding and your knowledge of uh, of Deleuze. Um, and also let me know the aspects you are more interested in. Um, so I, I will know uh, what to put the emphasis and which texts maybe are more interesting for you. Um, okay, so I let you introduce yourself uh, first and then we will discuss all the other, the other things. Uh, for the order, what you can do, the order that you, that you like. or I can do in the order of the images on my screen. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so I follow me. I think it's better. Okay, so the first I have is, uh, uh, I, I cannot pronounce it. Graz, Graz, Gors, then, sorry. Yes, it's Grzegorz, it's all right. <laughs> Yeah, so my, na my name is Grzegorz. I'm a PhD candid candidate in Kraków, in Poland. Right now, right now I'm living in Kassel. I'm, ex at, I'm at exchange. And uh, I'm mostly interested in repetition. So I know uh, several readings from Deleuze, but before he started to working with Quatari. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 
and that's <laughs> what I can say, say at the start, I think. Are you, are you a philosopher? I'm mostly artist, but I'm okay, using a philosophy as a starting point for my process. So, yeah. Okay. I'm a coordinator yeah. somehow too, or something like a curator. So, yeah, I'm working with theory too. And I was at the, I was for one year at the philosophy studies, mm -hmm. at the master's degree. Yeah. But mostly I'm doing ex exhibitions, not the theoretical texts. <laughs> okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. Then I have Aglaya. Okay, hi, hello. I'm Aglaya. I'm art historian and curator, and I'm enrolled in art and curatorial studies program here in the new center. My knowledge on Deleuze is quite poor, and to be honest, I was avoiding philosophy on my bachelor and my two masters, and I finally feel like I'm more or less ready for it. I was interested in Deleuze's concepts of difference and all of these ideas of you know, becoming and things like that. But I, I mean, my knowledge is very weak and poor, so that's why I'm in this course. I'm pretty much interested in everything. And I guess like Deleuze is for now, for me, is one of the philosophers I really can buy, if I can say so. So like, that's my motivation, I would put it like that. Okay, thank you, welcome. Then I have uh, Noah. Hey, I'm a filmmaker. I have like no real philosophical background besides my own like casual readings. So like I'm I'm doing this really to get a more rigorous understanding of Deleuze because what I have read of him I've enjoyed, which has been like a few hundred pages of a thousand plateaus. But that's that's pretty much it. Um, and I'm in the transdisciplinary program uh, here with Jason. That's pretty much it. Okay, thank you, welcome. Uh, then I have Joel. Uh, hi everyone, um, my name is Joel. I'm a philosophy student from Washington State. Um, I did my undergrad in pragmatism and uh, philosophy of science. Um, a Thousand Plateaus was my, one of my major introductions to philosophy. So I feel as though my background with Deleuze is quite strong as far as this work with Guattari, though uh, difference repetition, that kind of thing, I don't have much of a background in, but uh, yeah, I'm most excited to read more Deleuze. I have one of my favorite philosophers. Uh, uh, yeah, that's about all. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Mil Plateau was my kind of my first introduction to philosophy too. <laughs> um, so, uh, Lucia? Hello everyone, I'm Lucia, I'm, I am an architect and I have no background in philosophy either, um, but I'm excited to take this class. Thank you. Uh, Rodolfo? Uh, hi, hello, I am Rodolfo. Um, from Mexico. I'm a, well, I just finished the year of certificate student in the new center, but more in art and curatorial practice. And I've been avoiding the philosophical ones, you know, the philosophical seminars. But so far, also because of uh, Cecil Malaspina, that's more oriented to philosophy, um, I'm, I, I'm trying to, to have more uh, seminars about this and also during pandemics, uh, what I what my my roommate roommate and I decided was to read a thousand plateaus, like with all the uh, with you know like constantly and doing a study group, and so far I am uh, well after that I've been reading the lesson Guattari mostly like Kafka, the um, um, Anti Antidipus and uh, what what is philosophy? And I am not a philosopher at all, so it's like I'm on the tracks. And I I think that the, the best thing is to continue by the less uh, guy or something. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Hello, um, I'm a musician in Pennsylvania currently. Um, 
I I guess I've been reading a bunch of Deleuze these days, been making my way through difference and repetition and uh, a good amount of of the capitalism and schizophrenia stuff. Um, I think the one essay that really in Thousand Plateaus that really caught my attention was uh, of the refrain. I loved that one. And um, so, yeah, excited to to learn more about the aspect of control in it all. Thanks. Thank you. Then I have uh, Bruno. We cannot hear you, Bruno. We cannot, we cannot hear you. Bruno, are you there? Yes, he was talking, but we cannot hear. Mm. Yeah, we can't hear you. And now? Yes, now yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi everyone, I am Bruno, um, critical philosophy certificate student. I am psychoanalyst and uh, mm. currently pursuing a master of philosophy at the University of Sao Paulo. Um, my research interests are self-organization of complex and modus scalar systems, uh, obsolescence and spectacularization of politics, um, psychoanalysis and fear of a language. And um, Deleuze is someone who has been in constant dialogue with all of this. Uh, especially learn to deep yes psychoanalysis <laughs> yes okay thank you uh gregory i'm gregory van wagon and i i live in oregon and on the west coast of the u.s i teach philosophy at lynn benton community college and at north idaho college in Coeur d'Alene, idaho I, I took one of Anna's courses and I learned so much about Deleuze. I didn't have much of a background with Deleuze. I read the nomadology in Mille Plateau first. And I thought I knew Deleuze. And we read in the Rule Governed Games seminar, um, Logic of Sense, bits of Logic of Sense. And I learned so much about Deleuze. So I'm really excited to be here. But my knowledge of Deleuze is mediocre at best. So I'm excited to learn more with you guys. Thank you. Um, Blasi? Yes, hello. Uh, so I don't have any substantial background in philosophy apart from also casual readings. My background is mostly in computer science and music and media art. Uh, I am based in Linz, Austria now. Uh, I'm Polish. And I uh, got to know a bit about uh, Deleuze through my interest on accelerationism and uh, readings on acceleration is mostly uh, what interests me um, or what uh, catches my attention uh, is the concept of the outside or the other and it's working on the way uh, how we um, think and act and what we believe is possible and uh, I guess uh, this class is really interesting for me because I uh, always um, uh, wonder how can uh, art um, actually do a substantial change or how can it um, try to, to uh, subvert the oppressive system for real. Um, so yeah, I'm also hoping a lot to, uh, to get to understand this much better and to improve my uh, knowledge on him and also to learn something uh, pretty practical, to be honest. Uh, I'd like to uh, come out with, um, uh, you know, some a methodology, let's say. Um, so yeah, really looking forward. Thank you. And Rafael, would you like to introduce yourself too? <laughs> yeah, of course. As uh, just a correction, uh, my name is Enrique. Uh, uh, Rafael, I think you, you're mistaking me for the other moderator. Yeah, so, yeah, that's so. why I asked you to introduce yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <just> to, <laughs> Thank you. To make uh, sure that is, I know you. My name is Enrique. Uh, I'm also. Uh, a participant in this in this 
uh, seminar, but uh, I'm acting as a moderator too. Uh, my interests currently are on capitalism, on how uh, how transformation from all one so social system to another occurs. And I try to read some of Deleuze's uh, anti-Oedipus. It was really hard, really, uh, really, uh, how can I say this? It was really open, really different text from other uh, philosophical writings. And, but it was a nice experience. Even, even if I couldn't understand nothing of what he was saying, it was a, a, a really interesting sensation to uh, see how, how Deleuze and Guattari work with uh, their writing. And that's it, I think. Thank you. And then I have Joe. Joe Lingao. Oh, I thought you said Joe or something. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, I'm a filmmaker from the Philippines. Um, my work is mainly concerned with uh, identity and memory, uh, childhood, and uh, but currently the current focus of my work, uh, it's about uh, Filipino violence and terrorism. So it's uh, it's a response to the uh, political atmosphere here right now. Um, so my background, uh, I read I read this uh, writings of Deleuze on cinema, uh, and then it started from there. Uh, a thousand tattoos, you know, different repetition. So it's kind of like a. a I'm, I read uh, like uh, sporadically, I read about Deleuze and Guattari. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> okay, cool, thank you. Uh, Fernando? Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Fernando, uh, I'm from Brazil. Uh, uh, I'm a psychotherapist. And I just read the, the last book on Foucault, but I tried to read the, 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 the anti Oedipus and the, the A Thousand Plateaus, but I just read some texts. I couldn't finish the, those books. Okay, well, thank you. And Yerina, I don't know if I pronounce it correctly. That's correct, yes. <laughs> Hi. Um, so from Deleuze, I've read his writings on uh, cinema, so the time image, the movement image. Um, my background is a little bit in uh, cinema studies, mm -hmm. um, but I've taken further seminars in uh, philosophy of art and philosophy of technology. Uh, and currently, I'm really interested in landscape and landscape art. Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to exactly tie it all together, but that's for a brief intro. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I think that everybody introduced himself. Um, okay, so um, I selected a few texts. Uh, I just share my screen with the with the program. Uh, not that I can see you anymore. Okay. Um, and I try to select uh, um, some easy text. Um, so it will give us the possibility of uh, understanding uh, the losses. Um, main concepts and also try to see how uh, do they transform themselves because the difficult thing with Deleuze is that uh, he has some concepts in the beginning and then uh, names of concepts are changing uh, 
um, all the time since the beginning, but they're not stable names for concepts and also says a lot about um, Deleuze's attitude. So the idea that concepts are not really related to language. Uh, so we will try to see uh, um, the, the equivalent um, of these concepts uh, in early philosophy and then in later philosophy. Um, so uh, I choose some interview and uh, uh, other texts. Uh, the idea uh, for me is to arrive uh, at the end of this seminar. Uh, to really understand uh, two important texts, uh, which for me are kind of the most important in the last philosophy, uh, which are the post on society, on control societies, and uh, what is a creative act. Um, so the other texts, in some way, we will use them in order to um, have a clear, or oh, I hope so, uh, understanding or at least the tools for understanding this last um, two uh, texts by Deleuze. Um, so this is, then of course, I, I will try to be uh, as clear as, as possible. Uh, then of course you can ask questions, ask for clarifications whenever, whenever you want. So. It's not a problem to make uh, uh, the tools or to spend time to really uh, try to get the way in which Deleuze is reasoning, also because it's kind of weird way of reasoning. So it's really connected with uh, continental philosophy, with structuralism, and maybe you're not familiar with it. So um, if you are not, it's really important to um try to get this kind of of perspective on philosophical perspective and we will try to uh, together um okay so we have uh four sections um so any sunday till november 20th um i will uh, I, I decided to uh have um uh, this kind of reading of the texts uh, during the first three sections, and then to have all your presentations uh, at the end. Uh, so you will have the possibility of using the material uh, after uh, our sort of work on them, our, our work on the readings, uh, work on the on the materials. Um, so for these uh, presentations, um, so you won't have a lot of time. So I'm not asking you to do um, a kind of achieved, um, achieved work, uh, but I think that it would be useful uh, to um, have a presentation which is functional uh, to um, develop your uh, final essay. Um, so um, the final essay uh, is due uh, three weeks after the end of the seminar. So I think it will be kind of uh, December uh, 10th, uh, the 10th of December. Uh, so you will have three weeks for your final essay, which is also something that it's not, I, I not think you will be able to um, uh, submit something really uh, achieved or, or developed. Uh, what is important for me is that for the student's presentation, uh, you just propose your theme, your subject, or the aspects in um, the laws you are more interested in and try to relate this to your own work, to your own uh, research. Uh, so uh, try to um, discuss and appropriate Deleuze's concepts in order to um, develop your own ideas or your own practices. So I would like just to, to hear um, what you are interested in, how you are using these concepts and how you think you will um, integrate uh, them. Uh, so just a way of 
discussing together the subject for your for your finalism. Um, and of course, I will provide you suggestions. So it's not a way of uh, due or uh, kind of homework. Uh, you will be judged with respect to it. it it's more like uh, discussing together about things you are more interested in, you would like to develop, uh, etc. Um, and uh, um, for your uh, final essay, uh, I just ask you to uh, write a text about this, um, about your interest in Deleuze, the way in which you are appropriate concepts, the way in which um, uh, you are reflecting on them and why they are useful uh, for your uh, practice or, or, your, or your research. Um, and so that's it. Is, is it okay for you? Any question? Okay. Um, so I think we will start with uh, a text. I, I, I share my screen with the text. Uh, since maybe it's better to go through them uh, together. Um, just to be sure that we can, because there are a lot of uh, ambiguities in the resist text, the weird ways of um, calling concepts. So um, sometimes sentences are a little bit uh, are a little bit weird if you are not familiar with uh, Deleuze philosophy. Um, so I think the better way is to uh, follow follow the text and try to um, try to understand them and also to question them. Um, so. As I said, uh, you can ask questions or com comments whenever you uh, you like. Um, so I'm trying to refer uh, refer back to previous texts, um, and of course, if you find that there is connections, there are connections with other texts, you can uh, you can. Um, tell it or uh, just suggest these connections if you think they are, they are relevant. Um, so uh, I'm starting with this reading, which is on capitalism and desire, uh, which is an interview. And I'm starting with this because it's a way of uh, connecting our topic, which is uh, mostly about um, the society of control and strategies of uh, resistance against this, this control. So try to connect this topic uh, to uh, the previous works. Uh, so uh, in particular with the uh, Antiedipus and um, Thousand Plateaus. Um, so in this interview, we have Deleuze and uh, Gattari, we are, who are mostly uh, answering questions by um, referring to the uh, Antiedipus. Um, so it's important, I think, to, to connect um, also because, I mean, in, they, in this interview um, is, uh, they, they published the Antiedipus when they're working together on the plateau. Um, so it's also a way of understanding how they are um, elaborating the work uh, that they made uh, in uh, the Antiedipus in order to develop um, the plateau. Um, so I think well, it's 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 important uh, in order to make uh, to make a connection and try to um, get acquainted with uh, Deleuze's and and Guattari's uh, concepts. I will also try to show that there is a coherence um, 
in uh, Deleuze, uh, Deleuze's career, uh, meaning that many people see a sort of uh, break or a sort of radical change uh, between the first books, like uh, Difference and Repetition and the Logic of Sense, and uh, the works that he made with um, Gattari. Um, I think that there is a beautiful coherence. Um, and so I, I will try to, to show you why I think so and why this is my opinion. Um, and also uh, why we can consider that in the Antidipus and um, Thousand Plateaus, there is an important um, development, but a development which was in some way needed uh, by the problems that Deleuze encountered with his previous text, and in particular with respect to the uh, political uh, and historical conditions in, um, in France. Uh, so what is important, I think, to, to mention um, is that uh, between the first, what is called the first Deleuze and the second uh, Deleuze, um, what happened is uh, May 68. Um, so um, May 68 in France was kind of a really important political uh, event. And what is maybe more important uh, from Deleuze's perspective is that this uh, May 68 failed, failed completely. Um, so it was kind of uh, striken by this, this, this failure. So they were all hoping in something new. They were hoping in some kind of um, revolution that didn't happen. So there is also a famous text by uh, Deleuze, which is called uh, May 68 Never Happened. Um, and so, um, his work with Gattari is mostly motivated by uh, this failure of May 68, try to explain uh, on the one hand um, why this kind of insurrection, this kind of uh, revolution or this kind of desire, you will call, you would call it, uh, emerged at some point, but also why it was uh, completely uh, repressed uh, and um, why this event didn't have any uh, relevant uh, consequence and order was uh, restored uh, after a little, a little while. So um, what motivated in some way their uh, analysis of capitalism of um, our society, the way in which capitalism was, works, is also to try to explain this event of uh, May um, 68 and uh, the current situation, a uh, situation in which um, revolutionary movements are more and more um, difficult. So it's more and more difficult to actually uh, resist uh, this new system of, um, of capitalism. Um, okay. So, um, Actuel uh, is a journal in, um, in France. So they are asking questions in particular. Uh, the first question is about um, the description, description of um, capitalism. Uh, the questions are referring to um, the Antidipus text. Um, so the, the quote uh, Deleuze will comment in the first answer is, there isn't uh, the slightest, slightest operation, the slightest industrial or financial mechanism that fails uh, to manifest the dementia of capitalist system and the pathological character of its rationality not a false rationality at all, but a true rationality of this pathology, uh, this madness, because the machine works, uh, there can be no uh, doubt. Um, there is no danger of it going insane because through and through it is already 
insane um, from get go, and that's where its rationality uh, comes from. Um, okay, so uh, I, I would mention that the subtitle um, of Deleuze's and Gattari's book is um, Capitalism and uh, Schizophrenia. Uh, so um, there, there is a clear connection with uh, madness and uh, in particular a sort of reaction against the way in which madness is uh, formed, conceived uh, by uh, psychoanalysis. So for Deleuze and Gattari, there is a sort of madness of capitalism and uh, this madness of capitalism is connected in some way to uh, schizophrenia. Uh, and uh, what is interesting for them is the way in which um the um this kind of madness uh is um in some way uh repressed even though it is uh the actual source uh for uh the, the growth of a system uh in itself but we will see this more uh, more in details um later um so this theme of, of madness is is really is really important and it also explains the connection between um Deleuze and, uh, and Foucault for example so Foucault was really interested in uh madness in he wrote a sort of history of madness um, and the way in which there is a sort of normalization of society, um, which passed through uh, the uh, judgment on what is normal and what is pathological, what is truly rational and what is not. Um, so there is a sort of, uh, of connection uh, between Deleuze and, and Foucault, we will see uh, these more in details in uh, other readings. I think next week we will have more about this relation between um, Deleuze and, um, and Foucault. Okay, so the answer is every society is at once rational and, uh, um, and irrational. Uh, they are rational in their mechanism, uh, their gears and wheels, uh, the system of connection, and even by virtue of a place, they are assigned to the uh, irrational. So basically, uh, the irrational um, usually is um, is what is rationally defined. Uh, so any any system of rational rules or rational uh, axiomatic or rational uh, formation is kind of defining what is um, irrational. So there is a way in which uh, what is irrational depends upon what is defined as uh, rational. So the list here is suggesting to reverse uh, the um, relation. So it's not just asking what is irrational with respect to a certain norm of rationality, uh, but it's really considering the irrational, how um, uh, like the source of, uh, rationality or um, really what is outside uh, rationality. So it's not interested in um, what is irrational as uh, the space uh, which is assigned uh, for non-rational reasoning. So a kind of opposition or uh, contradiction with respect to rational behavior. Uh, it's a way of considering um, the irrational as the uh, source for any kind of rationality. Uh, so considering that rationality is a construction, uh, there is a construction of a rational system like capitalism can be seen as uh, a rational system according to uh, Deleuze since it has a sort of uh, axiomatics, uh, axiomatics, there are some rules, the decision must be rational decisions, uh, decision must uh, be uh, consequent. Um, so it's not, uh, capitalism is not irrational 
uh, because there are no rational rules. No, there are a lot of rational uh, rules within capitalism. What is, is rational is capitalism in itself. So it, it's not um, the, um, the system which is not working logically, if you wish. The system is, it has a logic, uh, it is rational, but the fact is that what is irrational is why do we desire this? Uh, it's a, what is irrational for, for Deleuze is why this kind of rational system is, is imposing. Uh, and uh, capitalism cannot account uh, for, it can, it can account for its own rationality, the rationality which is required uh, to agents who are acting within the system, but it cannot account for uh, the rationality of its own uh, construction uh, of, uh, of itself. So according to Deleuze, the, the idea is uh, what is, is rational is the system um, in itself. Um, so he's really interested in, in this um, irrationality. Um, as the source for any rational system. So it's like, it's, it's as a reason is always a region carved out of a rational. Um, of course, this irrational, uh, it's not just chaos or non-reason or uh, something undetermined or, or negative. Uh, this is this is the important thing. It's not it's not um, negative, but it's um, it's a kind of fullness, uh, if you want. So what is important in in, in Deleuze uh, is that he's avoiding uh, oppositions, um, is avoiding um, contradictions. So uh, here um, and also the the, the negative. Uh, in particular, the negative, which is the origin of uh, contradiction and uh, um, and oppositions. Uh, so the rational is not something which is lacking reason. So it's not the place of a lack of something missing. It's not that it, what is irrational is irrational because it's missing reason. Uh, in the same way as um, the desire for Deleuze is not defined I, as um, um, motivated by uh, luck, by uh, something missing, but it's a sort of fullness. Uh, so there is no, uh, there is no negativity. So we can say that desire and rationality, um, if you wish, are completely uh, positive instances, um, and it is um, rationality. So specific forms of rationality, which are constructed um, on this kind of irrational uh, field um, as um, specific uh, systems or specific, uh, specific machines, um, which are working with respect to uh, specific, uh, specific rules. Um, so uh, this is also a, a way of conceiving uh, this kind of um, immanence. So you have a sort of full body um, of um, potentiality, uh, if you wish. And this potentiality is not exhausted by a specific system of rationality or a specific kind of organization. Um, so it can be considered as a sort of uh, outside, if you wish, if you don't consider the uh, outside as something which is opposing, or which is limited by the inside. But if you consider the uh, inside um, as a sort of uh, construction emerging uh, from uh, this kind of uh, of ground, a ground which is um, rather than an exteriority, uh, it's more like a zero degree. So we have a sort of irrationality, which is a sort of zero degree of rationality and different systems of rationality that can 
uh, grow on this zero uh, degree um, of um, irrationality without exhausting uh, it. So it's an exteriority as limit. And this notion of limit is, is really important uh, for, um, for Deleuze. So um, it's limit in a mathematical sense. It's not limit like, um, uh, we take a totality and and we break it in two parts and one is limiting the other like opposite this is not the way of reasoning the way of reasoning is uh we have a kind of uh plane or a kind of you just have to think for example about a geometrical uh geometrical plane which is um uh, undetermined but you can you can construct forms on um, on it. Um, so uh, any form is is growing on uh, on this plane, but there is no uh, no relation of contradiction of outside and in, inside. Um, but opposes uh, the, these two um, these two forms. So the this irrational is not undetermined um, in some way, but it is. Um, it is the uh, condition for determination is the, the internal uh, internal limit, or what you will call a uh, difference. So, um, um, a difference, uh, of course, is is not uh, is not a difference between two things. Uh, different difference is. The, the genetic condition. So it's like we, we draw a line on a plane and this is a difference uh, from this first drawing uh, of, of, of a line. Uh, we have um, uh, some uh, determination of the plan, plane and the possibility of constructing something or let something emerging from the plane. The fact is that the line can be drawn in many different ways. So there is no just one way of drawing a line on um, on the plane. Um, so this is the relation between uh, this rational and uh, and irrational. Um, so the irrational is not the opposite of, of the rational. Is uh, mostly the um, internal uh, limit or the um, zero degree. Uh, of uh, of rationality conceived as something which has the potentiality of letting different systems of rationality to emerge. So what is ir irrational in capitalism is not capitalism itself, so the system in itself, how it works, because it works really rationally uh, in, in a ruled way. Um, what is ir irrational about uh, about capitalism is the fact that we consider it as the absolute, or that it has uh, the ambition of being the absolute system, of being able uh, to produce all the differences inside, all the novelties inside the system itself, uh, rather than considering itself as a system as emerging from uh, this uh, zero degree of irrationality or, or what you will call uh, desire. Um, or the same thing is the body without organs. Uh, they are all ways of uh, defining addressing this internal limit or um, zero degree. Um, which was in previous texts, for example, um, if we go in uh, uh, the logic of stance, this kind of ground is called the structure. Um, in and and the, um, the reference is of course uh, structuralism, um, which is uh, a system of differences uh, with elements which has no uh, no meaning. Um, then um, in um, in difference, well, in in um, 
in the logic of, of sense, this is also called uh, the time of ion. Uh, and uh, um, in um, in uh, thousand plateaus, it will be uh, the uh, body without uh, organs. In the um, Antiedipus is more this, this kind of desire, is the field of desire. Um, so with this concept is kind of meaning the same thing. Um, although uh, there are reasons also because, because it changed is, uh, the, the names of the concepts. Uh, in particular, after meeting uh, Gattari, Deleuze decided that um, he has to um, abandon uh, the idea of structure uh, because it was turning into uh, something uh, problematic. And uh, in particular, by thinking of uh, Lacan works, so at the beginning, Deleuze was really, really uh, close to Lacan, um, and he was considering this unconscious structure, like all the, the structuralists. The, the, uh, unconscious is a language, the unconscious is pure structure, and it's symbolic uh, structure, no? Um, so thinking the, the structure as a field of unconscious, unconscious here is the, the sort of rationality with irrationality, uh, which is the ground for the construction of um, rationality, so the system of, um, of reality, um, which depends on this symbolic order, which is, uh, which, which is another kind of order, no? It's the unconscious uh, internal limit of, um, of rationality, of the correct construction of, uh, of reality. Um, but, uh, of course, this um, predominance of the order of a uh, signifier was problematic for Deleuze, the order of a signifier in, in, in Lacan. Um, so the idea that uh, there is just a universal structure and that we can apply this kind of structure to um, everybody is kind of um, a block, the crystallized structure and Deleuze started having some problem. And he uh, overcame this problem after meeting uh, Gattari. So he met Gattari because um, Gattari um, wrote a paper. Gattari was, was a Lacanian too, um, but he had some problem with Lacan, so was trying to do the same thing, try to overcome this uh, crystallized notion of a structure that we, a symbolic structure that we have in Lacan. So Gattari wrote this uh, paper in 1969, I think, uh, and it was called From the Structure to the Machine. Um, he tried to publish this on the on Lacan's journal. Uh, Lacan's, of course, refuted this. Um, Gattari was proposing that the um, um, little a object was a machine, so Lacan didn't accept the paper in, in his journal. Anyway, uh, a common friend sent uh, this uh, paper um, from structure to machine uh, to uh, Deleuze. Uh, Deleuze read this and he understood that there was a kind of solution to what he was looking for. Uh, so um, Deleuze and Gattari started um, writing uh, to each other for at the beginning was just uh, letters and then they met and they decided to uh, to work together so what I, I want to say is that the notion of structure has been substituted by the notion of machine uh, so there is a coherence between the text even though um, the names of the concepts are, are changing and they're changing with uh, with some reason so okay the, the machine and the structure are not exactly the same thing but there is a way in which we are trying to address uh, this functionality, this function of this unconscious dimension 
or this um, uh, degree zero, uh, zero degree of, uh, of rationality and what, what we call um, desire. So um, a machine in some, in some ways a desiring machine. So you find this, this term many times in um, thousand uh, Plato's and in the Antedipus. So a desiring machine um, is a machine um, coding or producing, um, starting from this uh, potential uh, of, um, of desire, this, this unconscious um, desire. Uh, then Deleuze and, and Gattari will decide also to, uh, to abandon the, the, the term of uh, desire machine and um, the, the, uh, this, um, the, this ground or this um, limit, in, internal limit, won't uh, no more be addressed as a field of, uh, of desire. It will become the uh, body without uh, organs. Um, so it's 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 important to see how the um, uh, terms are, are changing. Um, okay, so we will see uh, maybe this uh, more in details later. I know I'm I'm telling you a lot of things, but they are just preliminary things in order to under to better understand the, uh, the the texts. Of course, I can I can go back if you if you need more explanation. So. Um, uh, this is just, okay, so we, we, we have a question. Uh, is there any difference between the, the, the body without organs in the anti-Oedipus and in the thousand plateaus? Um, I mean, it, it's kind of, um, of similar. Um, the idea is that in, in the Antiedipus, they are really, uh, they, they have a, an enemy, uh, which is um, psychoanalysis or Lacanian psychoanalysis um, in particular. Um, so they are really uh, considering um, uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the, the unconscious, as it is described in, in psychoanalysis in thousand plateaus is really more free. So there is no more, they are no more defining their concepts with respect to psychoanalysis or in a sort of dialogue, uh, but they are just describing very, very general, um, very general, uh, very general system for, for production. So they say, okay, the unconscious is a factory uh, rather than the place of uh, lack, the place of uh, deprivation. And um, um, in, uh, uh, in, in Thousand Plateaus is no, so the body with adult organs in, in Plateau is no more conceived as uh, this kind of um, non psychoanalytical unconscious, uh, but it's a more general condition for the production of uh, different systems, um, different organizations. So the body without organs is a kind of internal limit of any kind of organization, not only the organization of um, the uh, psychic, um, not only the psychic organization, uh, but any kind of organization. So there is a sort of continuity, but also kind of accents, which are, which are a, bit, a bit different. Yes, other questions? <laughs> okay, so yeah, I, I'm interested in this term uh, zero degree that uh, you repeat many times. Uh, so and rationality is a zero degree of rationality. Mm. Uh, I'm just curious where where does this uh, term or wording wording comes from, and uh, in what uh, way to understand the zero degree? 
Yeah, no, zero degree, actually you don't find it in, in Deleuze, it, it, it's me. Uh, it, it's because, um, because it's, it's kind of a um, mathematical limit. Um, so um, if you wish to understand, to understand why, um, we, so it, it's, it, it's a metaphysical problem, no? Um, so it, it's a way of considering the metaphysical conditions or the metaphysical reasons, um, not as something which is unknown, like an idea uh, which is unknown and which is a sort of existing thing, um, existing being uh, with respect to which uh, real beings like us are uh, something, um, uh, we, we are a kind of consequence. So we, our existence is, depends upon this real existence, which is the existence of this metaphysical being, this idea, no? Or the thing in itself, no? The thing in itself is the real uh, thing and the rest are just uh, um, illusions. So they, they are less being than the being, which is the, uh, this metaphysical reason. Uh, the idea for Deleuze is to reduce uh, this idea of this metaphysical outside to something which is like a zero, uh, so a pure difference. Uh, so if, if you take the differential, so the differential is the uh, ratio between numbers, which goes, which tends to go to zero. Uh, so it doesn't have any uh, reality, any being, because it's almost nothing, but it's a sort of determination because it's a, it's a ratio, you know? Uh, so it's a difference which, which can be con considered like a genetical uh, difference. So it's nothing, but it's a nothing which has a genetical uh, potentiality. So the idea of difference in Deleuze uh, is this idea of a differential as the almost zero nothing condition for the emergence of, um, of something. Um, so I, I'm, I'm saying limit or uh, zero degree by meaning that there is a sort of metaphysical dimension, but it's not the metaphysical dimension of a being, which is a superior being, but it's kind of a known being. Uh, it's a known being, meaning not, not meaning that it's the opposite, it's the negation of being, but it's the difference as genetic condition for uh, beings. So, so um, would you say some, uh, that it's something like a mathematical uh, translation of the thing it, itself uh, or yeah. like the, the most essential kind of, uh, um, uh, yeah, the, the essence of a thing? Uh, uh, so um, it's going back to, uh, to Leibniz, of course, here. Um, so uh, there is a lot of differential calculus in Deleuze, mostly, uh, mostly in differential repetition. Um, so in, in differential repetition, for example, it says ideas are problems. Uh, and the kind of problems ideas are, are um, problems, um, the problem is we have uh, differentials. Uh, so, so we have uh, points or the, the equation of the tangents to the curve, uh, and we have to generate the, the curve, you know, um, from the differential. So this is the kind of the, the kind of problem an, an idea is. Uh, so it's a set of uh, differential ratios distributed. So there is a determination, but it's a determination of nothing because it's a determination of point, which is which are almost zero. Um, so they are kind of genetic conditions, uh, which are uh, nothing, uh, which are pure, uh, pure differences, uh, but they can uh, generate uh, something. Uh, so the, the problem is, um, or, or the idea is called by the a known being, uh, known being like, okay, it's not the opposite of being, like the negative, but it's this kind of topological field, this kind of 
um, fields um, which is just punctuated by uh, singularities in mathematical sense. So anytime Deleuze says singularities is just in mathematical sense of a term, um, which differentiate this topological space. So the, the structure uh, is transformed by Deleuze into this topological space where there are only differences, uh, meaning differential um, ratios. And then uh, something can be uh, generated. The, the model is, uh, is Leibniz, of course. It was, it was Leibniz who uh, conceived that uh, God was actually uh, calculating um, the uh, construction of the world with respect to uh, differential um, relations. So um, you have um, any, uh, any, any monad which in, in some ways integrating um, uh, this, um, it's, it's um, what happens in the model is an operation of integration. So the reconstruction of uh, the curve from the uh, differentials, of course, the meaning of the differential calculus changed for Leibniz, for example, you have these uh, small obscure perceptions like uh, zero and then there is this sum which reproduce uh, the, uh, the, the phenomenal world, but not starting from ideas or things, but starting from differential relations. Um, so here the, the, the rational in this text is referring to this topological field, which is almost nothing, but from which um, a rational system or a rational organization can uh, emerge, even though um, there is no need, there's no necessity for just one organization to emerge. Uh, and uh, and this is the important thing. So um, this this kind of topological field, which is just uh, differentiated, so where we only have uh, differential relations or almost al almost nothing, is a field of intensities. So intensities and difference are the same meaning. So. Um, when we find this uh, idea that the body without organs is a field of intensities, th this is the meaning. Um, it's just traversed by pure intensity, so just by uh, differences, which are the, the conditions for the emergence uh, of, uh, of a structure, but uh, through a process which, which is called uh, individuation process uh, in uh, difference and repetition. Um, it is called differentiation in, in the logic of sense. Um, and, and I think that in this text is still called uh, individuation. Uh, even though it's more on, on the on the side of the machine, so what the machine is doing is basically um, is basically uh, producing or integrating or uh, operating from the conditions to the uh, the, the final product to, to this sort of uh, of production. Okay, so <laughs> uh, Rodolfo, you have a question. Yes. Uh, well, maybe it's uh, it has been a little bit uh, answered in this um, uh, in this answer you gave the last one. But um, is there like a difference, or which is the difference between calling something organization uh, and I mean, I, I feel somehow that the less and what are are reluctant to call organization to the body without organs because exactly there's a, a, a difference between, you know, being a body, you know, to const construct or produce yourself, but not to organize mm -hmm. somehow. Um, mm -hmm. But can you um, give me a more, more clues about this, you know, this... Yeah, uh, so the uh, the organs in some way are organizations with respect to the body without organs, no? 
uh, so um, a biological uh, individual is kind of organized, no, in some way, is organized because he has organs and organs are connected uh, in, in some functional way. Um, so they form a sort of organization or they form um, a system. The, the, the idea of the body without organ is, uh, is that uh, it's uh, the, um, uh, the condition uh, for the organization to emerge. So it's the set of differential relations or the set of intensities of a yeah. set of differences on the topological planes that uh, can, uh, that are the reason for uh, a specific kind of, um, of organization. Um, so uh, Deleuze says that there, there is no uh, contradiction between the body without organs and, uh, and the organization. Um, and any uh, body without without organ basically is is producing uh, a sort of um, of organization. Uh, what repels the body uh, without organs uh, is the fact that um, there is um, an organization which which is stuck, which is crystallized. Um, which is suppressing okay, yeah. the potentiality of a body without organ, no? which, which is desire, which is a productive desire. So when he's compelled or constrained to produce or to, to block the production uh, according to just one um, sort of structure or just one uh, organization, the body without organ is kind of suffering because there is um, a repression of desire uh, by using uh, Deleuze. Uh, vocabulary. So, so this desire is not the desire of somebody, uh, is um, uh, desire as uh, a potentiality that would express uh, itself in organization production. And then you can make a difference between uh, organizations uh, which are uh, blocking or controlling or suppressing this potential desire and organization which let um this uh, flow um to express more of this uh, potentiality of a body without uh, without organs okay thank you you're welcome yes i know that it can be a, li a little bit confusing but i think that we will arrive at, at the end of the seminar uh with some um some clarification overall um, okay, so it says everything about capitalism is rational except capital or <laughs> capitalism. Um, so a stock market is perfectly uh, rational. Um, so capitalists know how to use it, uh, and yet, uh, what a delirium. No, so, so the, the, the rational thing for the less is that uh, we are all submitted to the rules. Of, uh, of capitalism or of a financial market. And uh, this is the, the delirium for, for, for Deleuze, no? So the, the question uh, that he and, and Gattari are trying to answer is how it happened that we all desired uh, the slavery or we all desire to be uh, subjected to uh, the system. So this is the rational thing, no? Um, how do we do it? come out with this desire of uh, slavery, of suppressing desire, um, which is really connected to uh, May 68, no? Well, uh, it turned out to be a sort of suppression or... Um, okay, so rational is the way in which uh, people uh, Pulse of whose interests and attempt to realize them, but um, underneath that you find desires, investments of desire, that are not to be confused with investments of interest, and on which interest depend for their determination and very um, distribution. So there, there is this um, this difference which which is important between 
um, desire and uh, and interest. Um, so um, the system of preferences in capitalism, they are not expression of, uh, of desire, no? Um, so the, the, the illusion in, in, in capitalism is that uh, it's a way of uh, promising the fulfillment of, uh, of desires. Uh, in some way, we can, we can uh, think of uh, satisfying uh, interests or, or desires uh, within, um, within the system. But um, for Deleuze, there is, uh, there is a difference uh, because um, uh, interests are always related to something missing. Uh, so it's, it's a way of um, uh, acquiring something which uh, we have not. So we don't have enough money, we don't have enough things, we don't have enough recognition. So we need to uh, play, play the game in the system in order to uh, fulfill this sort of uh, holes, this sort of uh, luck that we have we have. Um, and for, for Deleuze, on the contrary, desire is, uh, is always positive. Uh, it's not the, the place of something. We do not desire in, in this sort of uh, metaphysical or unconscious sense because we are missing something. Uh, but desire is itself uh, the um, reason for uh, constructing for or organizing for producing so it's the excess of desire uh, which is the reason for uh, for production so desire is always in excess it's not uh, determined by uh, lack or something uh, or something missing so the, the problem with psychoanalysis of course is that psychoanalysis is always relating um, reasons to something uh, missing uh, to a constriction, to, um, uh, to a desire which is not fulfilled, to um, something, something lacking, something, something negative. And so for them, uh, psychoanalysis did not understand the unconscious, did not understand desire, uh, because they are relating um, the unconscious and um, psychoanalysis is relating the unconscious and, and desire to this, uh, this lack, this missing thing, this uh, empty place or... Um, so desire is not desire for uh, something, um, but it's the reason why something is given in some way. Okay, so the, the, um, the question here is articulated when people in a society desire repression uh, for other and for themselves. Uh, so desire, um, is positive in itself is not determined by uh, a lack of or, or something uh, missing as a sort of call, uh, but um, there is a desire for the repression of desire. And this is the strange thing that Deleuze and Gattari uh, will try to, to explain. So why, why desire uh, desires its own uh, repression? Uh, so capitalism in, in some ways, this uh, desire for repression of desire in the same way as psychoanalysis for uh, Gattari and, and Deleuze is um, this uh, way to um, repress uh, desire rather than uh, to uh, free it in a productive sense. So they, they say the unconscious is a sort of factory uh just producing uh not missing um anything this is also the way in which they are opposing the negative no so so they're not starting from something which is an identity and an opposition with something which is not uh they are really trying to avoid 
um, to avoid uh, contradictions or to start with difference. Um, rather than with uh, identities. So there is very clear disinterest love for the oppressive uh, machine. Um, of course, there is niche, which is really important here. Um, because niche was the, one of the first to, uh, to, to try to address this. Um, this idea of reactive forces um, and the triumph of the, of the slaves. Uh, so there is this, this kind of uh, drive for being uh, slaves, uh, which is in particular um, is referring to uh, the idea that any uh, sort of emancipation is so uh, is uh, conceived uh, as an opposition to something else. Um, so it says if, if we think of emancipation as opposing something or another identity, uh, we are in, in a sort of uh, dialectic of the master and the slave. Uh, which is just reproducing slave and, and masters. Uh, so for Nietzsche, the idea is to, to think of the production of the forces, not just as uh, opposing each other, um, but as um, um, trying to uh, fulfill themselves to, to, to go um, to the end of their own uh, power, no? Uh, by considering that uh, this, um, this, uh, this power is not opposing another power, but it's just, um, it's just trying to achieve its own uh, fulfillment, its own, um, um, its own and its own becoming. And uh, reactive forces are just blocking uh, or trying to uh, avoid um, these um, fluxes of, uh, of design. So they are reconstructing identities according to uh, specific um, models. Uh, and in particular, uh, the opposed categories of a slave and, and the masters to um to have these opposite identities rather than escaping uh, the dichotomy between uh these, these opposed roles um so there is a lot of niche of in, in Deleuze I think I think you, you know uh, we can make this more explicit if you like but uh, it, it, it's quite long to, to explain um Okay, so in capitalism, desire and interest or desire and reason are distributed in a totally new way or a particularly uh, abnormal way. Uh, so this is related to this uh, analysis of different societies. Um, in, um, in Deleuze, so uh, they, they analyze different kinds of um, organizations and um, for them, um, capitalism is a really particular um, organization uh, because um, it's not really imposing fixed uh, categories or fixed, uh, fixed identities, uh, but it's open to um, a continuous recodification. So uh, decodification and recodification of, um, of society of the so social roles. Um, and the, the, the idea is that um, there is a sort of uh, capitalistic uh, solution uh, for uh, this, um, for, for any social conflict. 
so it's not but there are no um, social conflict there are social conflicts there are um, which, which depends on the role so for example we have the role of a master and and the slave and um, in capitalism the idea is uh, not to uh, to say okay no you have you are the slave you are a master forever uh, but the idea is to create the capitalistic solution for uh, the uh, for, for the contradiction no? um, Uh, so the conclusion is uh, is that of course there is no um, an ideology. So in capitalism there is no there is no ideology. So capitalism is mostly against um, ideology in some ways. So ideology is a way of um, explaining um, explaining capitalism, but there is no uh, there is no ideology. It's constructed in a certain way against um, ideology ideology in itself because it's always uh, changing. What is more important for Deleuze is um, to recognize the organization of power. Um, and for him, uh, ideology and power are, are not the same thing. Uh, so there is an organization of power. Um, and, um, and it's referred to the way in which desire is already in the economic. Uh, the way libido invests uh, the economic and the economic and, and foster the political form of, um, of repression. Um, so capitalism is a way of investing uh, desire. Uh, so canalizing uh, desire in, uh, in specific, uh, specific ways. And this canalization of desire is, of course, a repression of the productivity uh, of desire, but it also produces the, um, the illusion that um, interest can be satisfied within, uh, within the system. So that uh, the, the contradiction produced within the system can be solved within, um, within the system. Uh, so for Deleuze, the problem is that everything is happening, but within the system. And it's like a system that has no outside, no? Uh, so all the differences are produced inside the different, inside the system as uh, oppositions, as um, contradictions. Uh, but there is no way of producing uh, a different kind of organization. So to liberate the intensities, on, on the body without organs to produce another kind of organization, which is not the capitalistic organization, even though the capitalistic organization is evolving. It's always evolving. It's, it, it's a process, no? Uh, so there is this, this illusion of creativity, this illusion of uh, change, um, the illusion that uh, we can have any kind of, um, uh, desire or any kind of objective or any kind of interest and it can be, might be fulfilled within um, capitalism. What cannot be desired is another kind of system. So uh, it's the desire for uh, a non-capitalistic satisfaction of desire, which is, um, which, which is blocked, which is not uh, admitted, which is impossible. So that's why desire is investing in the field. No, it's like capitalism uh, would like to be uh, equal to the totality of the um, of the desire. No, uh, so want to be the um, so that's why, for example, in in a thousand no in the Antidepus you have this idea that um, the limit of capitalism is the body without organ in itself, you know? because the, the ambition of capitalism is to be equal to, um, to the totality of, of desire. So to, um, to, 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 to be the absolute uh, institution of the absolute um, organization uh, using all the resources of um, of desire, 
uh, the body without uh, without organs. Um, so it's 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 a limit as as an internal limit, no, which is which is the limit of a sort of implosion. Um, and this is also the reason why it, it's schizophrenic in some way. Um, okay, so here is well, ideology, smoke and mirrors. Um, so there is no, uh, there is no ideology, uh, and this is important. So there is no ideology, but there are only uh, power organizations, um, and actually. Um, to talk about uh, ideology is a perfect way to ignore how desire works on uh, infrastructure, invests it, uh, belongs to it, and how desire thereby organizes uh, power. It organizes the system of, uh, of repression. Um, so anything basically is a product of, uh, of desire, no? Uh, so repression is, uh, a product of uh, of desire. So um, there is there is no opposite to desire. So the, the desire is this kind of um, full uh, full ground. So also the repression of desire is production of desire. So there is no uh, difference uh, between. Um, uh, repressing organization and desire itself. Um, so there, are, there is no ideology, there are only organizations of uh, power. So we will see better this idea of organization of power by uh, reading uh, Foucault, uh, Foucault, uh, Foucault's texts, uh, I think in, uh, next week. Uh, because of course they uh, took this idea of uh, of power from uh, from Foucault. Um, so there is also the will of power in Nietzsche. So it's uh, this, this idea of um, of power is kind of mixing uh, Nietzsche and Foucault uh, by considering also that Foucault took it from Nietzsche. Uh, so Foucault was was really uh, Nietzsche, um, which is not really well known, but uh, um, is. Uh, so this idea of, of of power, it's really close to the Nietzschean idea of power of will, uh, will to power. Um, okay, so we have the problem of May sixty eight, which is central. Um, then, okay, we, we also have some intervention from uh, Gattari. Um, so Gattari uh, is, um, was a psychiatric um, and um, he, was not, he was not a philosopher. Uh, basically, and um, he was really involved in um, in militantism, in left militantism, and um, uh, Deleuze at the beginning was not really really, really involved, and he became with uh, with Gattari, and he has this role in some way of connecting uh, theory to uh, practice. So it is kind of proposing more uh, practical uh, examples uh, in this uh, in this interview. Um, so this is important. Only then our political opposition built up. So we said that uh, the, the logic of the, of, of the slave it's a way of conceiving. Uh, emancipation as an opposition, uh, uh, dichotomy or 
contradiction between terms. Uh, so he says, okay, political opposition are built up, uh, but they are the effect of, uh, of an organization. Um, so an individual chooses one position over another because in the scheme of organization of power, he has already chosen uh, and ate his opponent. It's just because we have the choice between uh, specific identities, opposed identities. So we, we embody the roles which are predetermined or allow it by, uh, by a structure. Uh, but power is not the relation between opposites. Power is not the relation between opposed identities, uh, but power is itself uh, the structure that allows for oppositions where we have roles and identities uh, which are uh, in a situation of uh, contradiction, of opposition, of, of war, uh, like the, uh, the slave and, and the master. So according to them, it's not that the opposition, um, so the power is the power of the master over the slave, but power uh, is the organization of society in masters and slaves. So power expresses itself in the construction of a social organization where, where there is no other choice than to be the master or the slave. Um, so this is, this is power, no? Uh, it's, it's about uh, the organization of roles, of uh, places, uh, rather than the relation between terms. Um, so there is also a sort of anti-dialectical uh, perspective, uh, which in Deleuze is, is really clear since difference and repetition, or no? difference and repetition is really constructed against, uh, against uh, Hegel idea of uh, negativity, contradiction, um, and, uh, and opposition. So it's substituting the notion of difference. So here um, they are um, considering this from the Marxist perspective. So the idea, uh, because there, there is this idea that um, it's kind of social contradictions who are producing uh, revolutions. So for them, it's not a matter of social contradiction. Uh, but power express itself in an organization which has a contradiction, which has oppositions, uh, which force to, 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 to embody um, roles uh, which are predetermined as the master and the slave and no other choice, you know, uh, with the possibility of um, exchanging. So the slaves became uh, the master and reciprocally. Um, okay, so here then we have examples, uh, historical examples, then uh, Gattaris is, um, is proposing, uh, which are interesting, uh, but maybe since we don't have too much time, you can read it. Um, so it's kind of explaining uh, the problem with uh, Marxism, Maoism, leftist movements, and why we fail all the revolutions. Um, so how the revolution uh, ends uh, end up in repression of revolutionary forces. Um, so it just be that this kind of um, uh, revolution um, they um, want to contain the desire that had been liberated. So in, in a revolution, there is some desire which is revelated and the, the period after the revolution, the post-revolutionary moment, it's a way of rechanneling the desire that has been, uh, that has been liberated. So there is a sort of betrayal of, uh, of the um, of revolution. Um, so uh, the desire of a schizophrenic, um, so it's uh, the desire of a schizophrenic, of course, it's, uh, um, it's another, kind, it's always the same desire because there is only um, 
uh, only, only desire um, ontologically, basically. Um, but um, how to explain this? Um, so, um, there is um, a way of desiring a specific organization of the way of channeling uh, desire through a specific um, organization um, for the, um, the schizophrenic. Uh, the, um, the idea is to, um, to enlarge uh, the, um, the conditions. Uh, so if we imagine, um, so we said that uh, we have uh, this kind of topological space, which is just uh, traversed by intensities, and these intensities are just uh, differentials, uh, distribution of uh, differentials, of distribution of um, differences. Uh, when we have an organization which is um, actualized, is just, uh, we can say, the answer to the condition of a specific problem. Um, which produce uh, um, a sort of uh, we, a, a specific organization um, through which desire is, 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 is channeled. Um, the idea of a schizophrenic is to enlarge the conditions, so not to accept just the conditions of a problem and to be individuated according to the condition of a specific problem. So just um, some differential condition or some intensity um, in the body without organs, but to uh, be individuated according to uh, different kind of problems. Um, so uh, enlarge uh, the space of the uh, differential conditions. So we said also that there is a, a schizophrenic tendency in capitalism, and we said that this uh, schizophrenic tendency in capitalism is to be equal uh, to the body without organs, no? Uh, so it's just to, to invest the totality uh, of, of desire. So the schizophrenic has this, the same kind of, uh, of ambition, rather than actualizing or embodying the solution to a specific problem, so the selection of um, particular uh, differential conditions, uh, the idea is to, um, to enlarge, uh, to, to, to embody uh, more problems at the same time, so to, to reconstruct uh, the problem, so to do. Um, so that, that's why the, the schizophrenic is, um, is a continuous process of individuation rather than an identity. So the construction of an identity of a subjectivity depends on the selection of some problematic conditions, some differentials. Uh, but uh, if we are individuated according to multiple problems, uh, we don't have um, a, um, a constructed identity or a subjectivity, but we, we are uh, becoming something else. So this is the problem of becoming animal, becoming woman, becoming minor, my, minor, minoritarian no? in, um, in, in the loose. Um, so the, the schizophrenic desire is um, not just invest uh, desire according to uh, specific um, intensities or specific uh, differential conditions, um, but uh, to um, to multiply uh, the, uh, the, the the individuation. Um, So some schizophrenic directly express a free deciphering of, um, of desire. Um, and of course, it's always collective because uh, it, it's including uh, the, uh, a multiplicity of conditions uh, for, uh, for individuation. So it's not just the individuation of uh, something of an individual or an, an identity, uh, but it's um, a multiplicity uh, of condition for, um, 
So that, that's why the conditions are always collective. No, it's not collective in the sense of interac the interaction of a given or achieved uh, identity. So collective is not um, of the order of uh, a plurality of uh, identities of individuals interacting, uh, but collective, it's always um, so the multiplicity or, or the collective individuation is always uh, collective with respect to the conditions. So they are the conditions for uh, the um, production of a plurality of, um, of in individuals. Okay, so this is a way of excess celebration uh, at the first stage of the revolution, but there is always a second stage, organization, operation, uh, and uh, all the serious stuff. Um, so there is always an order um, coming back after the uh, revolution of this uh, schizophrenic uh, liberation of desire. Um, okay, so we have the distinction which only trap desire to serve bureaucratic system. Um, so the, the, the idea is that this, this uh, reduction uh, of society to oppose categories or oppose classes. Um, it's uh, um, it's it's an effect of uh, a power structure uh, rather than the condition for uh, for emancipation. So the condition for emancipation is not that we have opposed or um, uh, reciprocally limited or reciprocally individuated uh, social uh, classes. Um, but uh, the, the the condition for revolution is to uh, to, to unleash desire uh, from the desire of this specific kind of organization, which is constructed with uh, opposed classes. So. I, demonstrates how avant-garde proletariat non-proletarian plebs distinction uh, is originally a distinction which the bourgeois introduces in two masses uh, to crush the phenomena of desire and marginalize it. Um, so it's this is, this is the way in which the um, uh, power organization is preceding social contradiction. Um, and it's not uh, an effect. Um, yes, and the problem is is to um, to have. Um, an organized revolution in some way, so rather than having a uh, singular individual escaping in some way from, from the logic is to, to construct a wall, um, a new, what, what Deleuze will call a, a people, no? A new people, the people which, which is missing, which is um, a collective uh, form uh, organizing uh, itself according uh, to another uh, structure according to another condition. So um, there is something uh, really explicit. I mean, for, for me, it's kind of really clarifying in um, indifference and, and repetition. Um, so what he says that uh, contradiction uh, is not uh, the weapon of the uh, proletarian. Uh, but uh, contradiction is the way in which uh, bourgeoisie um, is uh, imposing to everybody the, the only problem to be solved, you know? Um, so the, uh, the, 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 
the authentic uh, revolutionary endeavor is not to uh, oppose with respect to the same uh, problematic conditions, so to be uh, to, to embody uh, the enemy or to, to embody the other according to uh, some uh, given problematic condition, but is to pose another kind of problem, is to, 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 to individuate or to, to organize according to another problem, uh, which is not the problem coding for a system of binary uh, oppositions. Um, so the, the, the real struggle is for the problems, uh, to, to decide what, what the, um, the problem to be solved is. Um, so capitalism is a, a remarkable desiring machine. Uh, it's all desire and, uh, and flux. Um, I subsume social desire, including the desire for repression and death. Um, and the idea is, okay, was capitalism in its beginning revolutionary? The answer is not. And the answer is not because um, um because it uh, really uh entails since the beginning a system of uh, exploitation and uh, and repression mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so this is about revolutions Okay, so I really need to go to the toilet. So just wait <laughs> one minute. I'm sorry for this. I'll be back soon in 30 seconds. Sorry. Sorry for the interruption. Um, okay, I think we, we still have half an hour, no? Uh, just yeah, uh, Anna, we, we, we began. It was... I it was... So, yeah, we, we should go until 35. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, so capitalism has a very particular character. Its lines of escape are not just difficulties um, that arise, they are the very condition of its uh, operation. Uh, capitalism is founded on a generalized decoding of every uh, flow, flow of wealth, flow of labor, flow of language, flow of art. Uh, and it did not create any code, but it created a kind of accounting and axiomatic of decoded flows as the basis of its, um, its economy. Um, so that, that's why capitalism is compared to uh, the, uh, the schizophrenic. Um, so um, the, um, to, to understand this, we have to compare um, capitalism to previous kind of organization, uh, like for example, the, um, the empire. Uh, you find a lot of this comparison between um, older kind of organization, like imperialistic, uh, ancient uh, ways of um, organization and, and capitalism. 
and usually the uh, the, the the empire is based on on, on a precise coding. Um, so there is there is a set of uh, rules of given um, roles, and uh, it's uh, um, it's a structure that excludes. Um, anything else that does not uh, that does not change which is uh, centralized um, capitalism on, on the other uh, on the other hand um, it's uh, based on this uh, decoding of uh, of flows um, meaning that um, it's trying to uh, enlarge the um, the, uh, the the conditions. Um, so um, there is uh, always something uh, escaping um, in some way or something uh, which. Um, Exceed or which attempts to, uh, to to escape from the from the axiomatic, um, and this is positive for capitalism because it's trying to um, capture this uh, this this kind of desire and uh, propose uh, a capitalistic solution or a capitalistic satisfaction. No, so it's like any any time we have a kind of social problem of um social recrimination or the idea that okay uh, this problem is not solved within uh within the system uh there is always a way of proposing a capitalistic solution uh for um for the problem and this way of proposing a, a capitalistic or uh, economic solution for um for, for problem um it's it's a dialectic in some way through which capitalism uh, grows or reproduces itself or en en enlarges its, its own sphere, no? Um, so if, if we said that there is this tendency of capitalism to reach its own limit, so internal limits of a body without organ or the totality of a plane uh, where these intensities are, are, are distributed, the way of capturing um expression of desire which has which has line um lines of escape like lines of flight uh, what does we, we call lines of flight so it's kind of individuations uh which depends upon different kinds of conditions uh capitalism is trying to capture this this um individuation which happens according to uh conditions which are not the conditions of the system in order to enlarge uh, the system not to, 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 to enlarge the system to, to embrace um also uh these um new expressions of desire no, which, which are which are escaping um so the the, the idea of, the, of capitalism is to be uh to be equal to, uh, to desire itself uh but of course it, it, it entails to uh make of uh desire to to um to have only one organization which is coming from uh from uh desires so to include all the difference in a totality which has no differences which is not differing from anything else um so this is a uh, uh, sort of madness of of capitalism and and also its um, uh, its power and the way in which it um code desire or the way in which it can um manipulate desire in some way to, to desire its own uh, its own suppression It's endless, endlessly crossing its own um, limits, which keep reappearing uh, farther out. So it's not only a way of expand, expanding um, 
toward the exteriority, but it's also um, also a way of um, um, so the, to, to expand the internal limit, no? So the system is leaking all um, all over. So we have a question, Luca. Hey, hi, Anna and everyone. I am um, just wanted to ask about the last thing that you mentioned. Uh, I was in uh, as an audience and not as a panelist until now. I, I forgot to enter another link. Um, uh, I just wanted to ask: Does that mean that in a certain way, our present-day modes of desiring or like human ways of desiring or desire itself is in a certain way inherently capitalist already? Yeah. And that should be certain new modes or the attachment from this um, the present day modes. Uh, yeah, I think I think the, the, the problem is that we um, we are desiring according to um, to a capitalistic solution to uh, to desire. No, it's kind of we are we are desiring uh desiring like uh willing for things or wishing for things that can be uh, provided uh by capitalism itself uh we are it's, it's um so our, our our desire it's it's constructed or okay. But then is it also like a little bit going back to Kierkegaard? Um, I mean, it's, it's yeah. to reconsider kind of this aspect of the ways, uh, especially in arts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah. In the like, just in the sense of uh, art also being this very kind of uh, sometimes one handed critique towards capitalism without realizing that the desires itself are already constructed mm -hmm. and in the in the certain modes that are kind of pre-established already to be a capitalist in a certain way mm, yeah yeah yes of course um yeah there is this this way of yeah the desiring according to um According, according to capitalism, so the, the desire, a, a desire which is conformed to a capitalistic satisfaction or to an economic satisfaction of, of it, rather than um, a desire that really uh, escapes the possibility of uh, an economic satisfaction. No? Um, so, and, and that is the problem, no? So, so it's, the problem is it. It, it's really difficult to articulate uh, uh, desire in, in, in some you know, some other way uh, because it's always captured, no, in some way. Um, and at any time there is this kind of revolutionary um, impulse um, that is uh, that is a way of. Uh, which is a decoded flow, no? A uh, decoded flow, it's a new uh, sort of revolutionary uh, desire, which is a desire that at the beginning, it's not asking uh, for uh, an answer from, from the system, but it's just um, aiming to, to, to another kind of, um, of organization, which, which is alternative. Uh, the, the idea is that uh, it's, always converted, always reabsorbed uh, and, um, and, and bend uh, to accept uh, a capitalist uh, solution or, or satisfaction or to be included uh, within, uh, within the, um, the organization. 
so the problem is not that there is um, an imposition of, um, of, of roles, uh, but uh, all the new roles, all the new identities um, can be included, can be, um, and can be um, uh, casted according to uh, the necessity of uh, the desire for uh, capitalism. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I mean, I have a lot to ask and add on that, but like <laughs> maybe after another session. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so we have the example of the Crusades, which is um, a sort of schizophrenic movement which has been captured. Uh, by the uh, power of organization of the church. Uh, uh, and also this is important uh, with respect to um, psychiatry um, because we will find this later in the um, papers on the society of control. Um, so the idea that we have a sort of uh, liberation of, the, um, of mad people from the psychiatric, psychiatric hospitals. So the opening of the hospitals, free treatment. Uh, 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 so the, 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 um, the illusion of the appearance is that um, there is less uh, less control or um, no more uh, repression or codification of, of, of the behavior. Um, but here Gattari is, is, is noting that it's even more, uh, more dangerous, the fact that we are not um, followed or formed or, or repressing specific structures, but that we are all uh, followed uh, by um, um, psychotherapy or free treatment everywhere. So it's not that just mad people are treated in the specific structures, but we are all uh, treated everywhere. Uh, and, and this is a feature of the uh, society of control. So we are not... Um, closed or obliged to be in specific structure in order to be formed um, to accomplish specific tasks or to, to um, according to specific roles. Uh, but we are always followed and anybody can be, can be met and sometimes you know, anybody can be uh, abnormal. And, um, and this kind of, um, caring or, or control happens everywhere uh, with, with no, uh, no, no, no borders. So the characteristic of control um, is the idea that is kind of invisible and it's happening uh, all the time and it's happening everywhere. Um, so the, the psychiatrist is, uh, is sent out in the population like missionaries into, into the bush. So the child, for example, is immediately taken in charge by a network of uh, psychiatrists, tagged at an early age and followed uh, for, for life, but anybody is potentially, uh, potentially uh, mad, you know? Um, just to, to, to assure that we desire in the correct way. Um, so the most conservative ideology is spreading everywhere. So it's problem with analysis is that anybody is, um, is doing uh, psychoanalysis. Um, its function beyond the confines of wall, but it's much worse as a repressive force. It's uh, much more dangerous. So this is uh, 
uh, Gattari's <laughs> problem uh, as he's a psychiatric and he worked in clinics. Uh, so it's not seen a sort of like a progress in, in the discipline uh, or uh, less uh, surveillance, less control, less uh, repression with the new methodology, uh, but it's, it's kind of seen uh, a more pervasive form of control. Um, So here, what, what I skipped is an example uh, about the dysfunctioning of uh, psychoanalysis. Uh, the idea that there was this woman who had really had problems and the uh, psychoanalyst just told her, okay, it's a problem with your father and that's it. Um, schizophrenia is uh, indissociable from the capitalist system. Uh, which is originally conceived as escape and, uh, and leak. So the capitalist economy functions through uh, the coding and the, the territorialization. Uh, and I think we explained this before. Okay, so I think this is the end of the paper. Um, you have questions? comments about this. If you um, if you don't, we can try to see uh, really shortly the other one, um, which is control and become it's another interview. Um, the person who is uh, asking questions is Tony Negri, uh, is, uh, interviewing um, Deleuze. Uh, so uh, Deleuze is making clear that uh, is interested in collective creation rather than representations. Um, it's really important this uh, anti, um, anti representation uh, position uh, in, uh, um, in Deleuze. Um, so it, it's really against, I'm trying to close this. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is really um, against uh, representation for uh, create. So he's opposing representation to um, to creation. Um, so representation um, is conceived as the um, uh, the, uh, the form which is provided by a priori condition. Uh, so representation is coded, if you want, uh, by uh, a priori conditions like uh, Kantian concepts. Um, and of course, the uh, subjects are uh, representations. And uh, collective creations are, uh, are something else. Um, the, the collective in collective creation uh, is not uh, that does not mean that um, they depends uh, upon the collaboration between uh, or among um, a plurality of individuals or formed individuals. Um, but collective uh, creation um, depends upon the selection of a specific uh, individuating conditions 
on the body without organs of a collective uh, of creation is not uh, that they are produced by individual working together or interacting together, but that uh, it's a sort of new people or a sort of new um, organization of identity which is produced, uh, starting from uh, the selection of uh, specific uh, conditions. So the uh, the collective uh, in creation is a creation of a collective. It's not the creation which depends on the interaction of a plurality of uh, individual. It's more the, the creation of um, a collective, uh, meaning that it's the, the, the product of uh, an, another kind of problem, the consideration of other um uh differential conditions uh, or conditions for um individuation uh, so about the um the laws uh, it, it's a way of uh, producing uh, the system of the uh, of laws, no, rather than acting according to uh, the um, laws. So we can we could say that a collective creation is um, a system of, of laws which determine uh, what an individual is, what a subject is, what are their rights, um, rather than being the effects of uh, behaving according to uh, the laws. Um, so what is political uh, according, according to Deleuze? Uh, it's not the interaction among uh, constituted subjects or represented subjects or subjects behaving according to uh, a priori laws or, or, or concepts. Um, but politics is uh, this um, political um, philosophy. It's uh, wondering about uh, the kind of of uh, collective organization uh, to be uh, to be created. So Antidipus was from the beginning uh, to end a book of political uh, philosophy uh, in this uh, in this sense. And another important concept is this uh, untimely. Um, the untimely is a concept that we find uh, in, um, in Deleuze, um, so in Deleuze, in Nietzsche. Um, so Nietzsche is considering uh, the uh, untimely uh, against, uh, against history. And what is really important for Deleuze is this difference between history and, uh, and creation. Um, um, which is um, the difference between uh, the event and the embodying of the event. Uh, Deleuze treated this in um, logic of sense in particular with respect to the um, uh, time uh, dimension, and also, of course, in, um, in difference, uh, and difference and repetition. Um, so the untimely is the, um, the event. Um, and an event is not cannot be reduced to an historical, an historical fact. So what history grasps in an event is the way it's actualized in particular circumstances. Uh, the events becoming is beyond the scope of history. Uh, to explain uh, the event, um, Deleuze refers in the logic of sense, uh, it refers to uh, the Stoics, um, who made the difference between a particular state of the world or um, situation um, concerning 
uh, our bodies, bodies are related to each other. So for example, uh, there is this, uh, this idea of a, of a battle. So a battle uh, is um, a, a fact, an historical fact, and um, it refers to a sort of situation of relations, um, relations among different, uh, different bodies. Uh, the event is what, what they are uh, embodying. So all these uh, bodies interacting among each other, uh, they are incarnating an event and the event can be extracted from, uh, from, the, uh, from the situation. So it's the event, uh, the event uh, of a battle, which is uh, embodied or actualized in particular uh, circumstances. Um, but uh, accord according to Deleuze, we cannot explain the event with respect to history. Um, so history or a part of history, an historical era, an historical moment is itself the actualization of, um, of an event. And uh, the event is on the side of the structure, is on the side of the differential um, conditions, uh, rather than on the side of the effect of causes. Uh, so, uh, so history is the actualization of uh, an event, but the event in itself, um, it's the fact that uh, a particular problem or a particular set of problematic conditions um, is, um, is solved or is um, letting the solution to emerge. So the event is, is, is the problem, the historical fact is the uh, solution um, to, uh, to the problem. So the, the actualization of specific uh, virtual conditions. So here is no more um, talking about uh, the difference between the virtual and the uh, and the actual. Um, so, so this idea of virtual disappear, but it does not disappear, uh, meaning that we can consider the body without organ organs like the virtual. Um, what was the, the, the structure? So the, the virtual as the set of uh, conditions of what we call this um, zero degree of, um, of, of being. So the, the event is, um, is on the side of a, of a virtual. Uh, the event is on the side of um, the specific um, intensities on the body without, without organ organs. Um, and the event is actualized in a specific uh, organization which is embodied in a specific uh, organization, which is an historical, uh, an historical fact. Uh, but we then define um, a specific set of conditions, a specific problem or a specific distribution of differences um, in, uh, in the structure or in the body without organs or um, a specific uh, uh, machination of desire. Um, so here again, we have this um, becoming is not part of history because becoming is the um, uh, the way in which uh, desire can be uh, rearticulated, uh, so to uh, diverge from history. Um, so to become is to create something new. So to create something new is not to uh, let uh, a situation to evolve. Uh, historically evolve, uh, but it's to embody different kind, uh, kind of conditions. So, so this is what Nietzsche called the untimely. Uh, untimely means that it's, um, it's not uh, 
chronologically determined or is not uh, an effect that follows uh, the uh, causes according to the uh, chronological order, uh, but the time is the happening of, um, of an event, which is the actualization of something which depends on um, conditions um virtual conditions so it's a possibility of a new history you know on a new um historical uh hero you know so revolutions turn out historically uh but then we have these people revolutionary becoming which is which is the event So man's only hope lies in revolutionary uh, becoming. Um, okay, so here we have again, we think of any society is defined not so much but its contradictions, but its line of flights. Um, so it's important. So it's not a, a way of opposing roles uh, or identities one against each other. Um, but defines a society, but lines uh, lines of flight, um, meaning the possible escapes or the possible um, events uh, that uh, that happens or the way in which something is organized or happens according to a different kind of virtual uh, conditions. Uh, and so these lines of flights are usually, or these events are usually embodied by uh, what they call a war machine. So a war machine is in some way the, uh, the, 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 the schizophrenic uh, because they don't use, or they use much less uh, the metaphor or, or the concept, the notion of schizophrenic in uh, 1000 Plato's and the, the, schizophrenic, uh, the schizophrenic function is uh, assumed by the war machine in uh, 1000 Plato's, but the, the, the idea is always the same of a sort of force which is independent from the uh, state um, apparatus. And that of course can be captured by the state apparatus, but uh, it's a sort of autonomous uh, becoming, not respecting uh, the territoriality of the state. So the uh, set of uh, oppositions or dichotomies. So artistic movements are war, uh, war machines, uh, meaning that they are following autonomous lines of flight or specific kind of leaking uh, from the system. Um, and and sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, it's almost time. Yeah, okay. So I think we can stop here. Um, we can, okay, uh, we have, we have a, a question. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to ask if we have a little bit more of time. Um, is this notion of uh, the Lusian understanding of revolutionary event in a certain way similar to, or there, is there a connection to con uh, contingent event? Is it like a revolutionary event that is not exclusively concerning just humans or reactionary capacity on the existing state, but is somehow a genuine mode of uh, change? Is that what the, the Lusian revolutionary event accounts or not? So contingent is, is a bit misleading, uh, I think, uh, um, because there are too many ways of <laughs> defining what is, what is contingent. Um, yeah, so it's a way of um, in, 
introducing um, something which responds to a different problem. So we say, for example, uh, capitalism in itself, the capitalist system is the solution to a specific, uh, a specific problem. It's an organization which depends on specific uh, problematic conditions. Um, um, a revolution is uh, the sudden uh, solution to another kind of problem. So it's not recognizing that we all have to behave according to uh, one and the same problem. Uh, but it's a way of saying, okay, no, there is something more important than your problem. And this is another way of organizing another, an, an, another kind of problem that we want to uh, actualize. So uh, it's a way of uh, em embodying another event. Um, there is the event of capitalism. Um, which has its own becoming, uh, its own history, its own, its own process. Uh, the idea is, is it possible to embody, to actualize a, a, another event, you know, to, to, which is coming from outside in some way, uh, outside which is uh, always uh, in the inside limit, you know? Uh, it's not the outside, like something which is opposing to, um, but it's emerging from this uh, inexhaustible power of, of, of desire uh, within the inside. Then can be captured, of course. Okay, yeah. guys. Uh, please. I think uh, that I Diego has another you. question. Yeah, it's yeah. because of the time. It's okay. really short. Okay. Uh, Diego, you can ask maybe Anna, write an email to Anna or maybe use the Discord. Uh, actually, everybody, please feel, feel free to use the Discord to uh, discuss subjects uh, in this class. Uh, and I think for today, that's it. Uh, do you have anything you want to say, Anna? No, it's okay. So just, um, it's fine. Thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any other question, we can answer the uh, next time. Anyway, we don't have to read all the text, uh, no, no, no obligation. So uh, we can discuss further the uh, next next time. Okay. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to send you the the Google Sheets to you put your name for the presentations uh, after the class, and that's it for today. Bye, everyone, and thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.